good morning students today we are going to discuss about regulation of gastric secretion so obviously regulation of gastric secretion means it is involved with regulation of hcl secretion because most of the gastric secretion is containing nothing but hcl and in previous class itself we discussed about how pyrotensal secretes hcl that is mechanism of hcl secretion so today we are going to discuss about what are the factors that increase hcl secretion what are the factors that decrease hcl secretion from pyrotensals and how it is being regulated or controlled factors that increase gastric secretions gastrin histamine acetylcholine vagus or parasympathetic acetylcholine increases gastric secretion vagus increases gastric secretion or it has parasympathetic what is the effect of parasympathetic on gastric secretion parasympathetic also increases gastric secretion or its secretion now decrease so obviously when parasympathetic increases gastric secretion sympathetic decrease gastric secretion and also somatostatin in fact somatostatin inhibits everything and here somatostatin inhibits gastric secretion or inhibits hcl secretion so somatostatin is secreted from d cells of antrum gastrin is secreted from g cells of antrum histamine is secreted from ECL or enterochromaffin like cells. Enterochromaffin like cells which secretes histamine and this histamine increases gastric secretion. So now I can repeat gastric, histamine, acetylcholine. So these three increases gastric secretion. Now next question how they are going to act on the parietal cell and how they are going to increase acid secretion or on what receptors they are. That's what I have drawn here. So I will make it for understanding 1, 2, 3. So gastrin will act on CCKB. So the one is converted to B. Just listen. I first draw one, two, three. So gastrin acts on CCKB receptor. Histamine acts on H2 receptor. Three is for M3. So acetylcholine acts on M3 receptor. Listen here. 1, 2, 3. All these receptors are present on the parietal cell. Gastrin acts on CCKB. So no one, but for understanding, that one is cannot went to B. So gastrin acts on CCKB receptors, which are present in the parietal cell. Histamine acts on H2 receptors, which are present in the parietal cell. Astrocholine acts on M3 receptors, which are present in the parietal cell. And now next, how they increase, how they act in the parietal cell. So what CCKB does is, the mechanism of action is via GQ. So GQ and it goes IP3 DAG pathway. I again repeat, the gastrin. So how gastrin, from where gastrin is coming? Gastrin is secreted from G cells of antrum. How gastrin acts? Gastrin acts on CCKB receptors of the parietal cell and once the gastrin like hormone receptor complex like hormone receptor complex once gastrin combines with CCKB receptor what happens the GQ is activated and the GQ will form a complex with IP3 DAG calcium is involved and this IP3 DAG helps in HCL secretion so this is one way now I go to M3 Astrocholine. So astrocholine also follows the same pathway. That's what I want. So astrocholine, what it does? Again, GQ. Again, IP3. DAG. Calcium is involved. And HCL is secreted. Now the middle one, H2. So 1, 2, 3. The middle one, H2, is a little bit different. So histamine receptors. So histamine coming from enterochromaffin like cells. And histamine will act on H2 receptors, but the mode of action is different. What H2 does is it is GS and the GS not form IP3 DAG, it is adenosine ATP and this form cyclic AMP and that gives HCL. So gastrin and astrocholine almost same like GQ, GQ. Whereas histamine acts Instead of GQ, histamine acts on GS and the GS 
is forming adenosine and ATP and additional is cyclic KMP and cyclic KMP is forming HCL. So all these are involved in HCL production. So if you ask which is the main thing involved in HCL production, it is obviously H plus K plus ATPs. So that is the first thing. So if you for example, if I am asking, tell me the important thing which is involved in HCL secretion, histamine, acetylcholine, gas 10, H plus K plus ATPs. The answer is H plus K plus ATPs because that is the final output which is going to come from the parietal cell. Now this question is a right answer. Which is the most potent stimulus for acid HCL secretion? Gastrin, histamine, acetylcholine. So here the answer will be histamine. The reason is you can see gastrin and acetylcholine follow the same pathway G to IP3 DAG. So since it is following the same pathway, they are not unique. They both are similar. Whereas in case if I am going to block this H2 receptors, what happens? This entire green color circuit is gone. So there is no GA stimulation, no adenosine ATP. Whereas if I block this, one GQ is blocked, but another GQ is there. So somewhat the GQ pathway is still active. If I block either gastrin or astrocholin. So if I block astrocholin, the gastrin GQ pathway is active and actually secreted. If I block gastrin, the astrocholin GQ pathway is active. But if I block H2, there is no GS pathway. Are you able to understand? That's why histamine is very, very important of the three. So now I discussed about the receptors, various type of receptors. Remember, one, two, three. One is CCKB, one for B. Two is H2 receptors. Three is M3 receptors. So, acetylcholine acts on M3 receptors, histamine acts on H2 receptors, and gastrin acts on CCKB. Gastrin is coming from G cells of antrum, histamine is coming from antrochromophil like cells, and somatostatin inhibits. HCL secretion and somatostatin is being secreted from D cells of antrum. Sympathetic inhibits HCL secretion, parasympathetic stimulates HCL secretion. Okay, now with this phase, I will link the phases of gastric secretion. So there are three phases of gastric secretion which you might be knowing: cephalic phase, gastric phase, intestinal phase. Intestinal phase is just 5 to 10 percentage. Cephalic phase is around 40 to 50 percentage. Gastric phase is around 50 to 60 percentage. So these two are very important phases of gastric acid secretion or gastric secretion. Cephalic phase, as the name suggests, even before food enters into the stomach, there is secretion in the stomach. Like cephalic phase is think thought of food. Like now I'm thinking of biryani. I want to eat biryani morning. So at lunch time I'm planning. So one am I want to have chicken biryani, mutton biryani, something like that. So once I think the thought process itself causes gastric secretion. Gastric means stomach. Itself causes secretion in the stomach. That is called cephalic phase. Thought, sight of food. So when I see the biryani, I am not yet the biryani has not yet entered enter into my stomach, but I am seeing the biryani. So that itself sight, even smell, taste. So all these things, the food has not entered into the stomach, but I am thinking of biryani, I am getting this, perceiving the smell of biryani, I am tasting the biryani just in the tongue, but the biryani has not entered into the stomach. But all these comes under cephalic phase, and yes, in fact 40 to 50 percentage of the gastric secretion is occurring during the cephalic phase. Then thus think of the importance of the cephalic phase. Gastric phase, Yes, food is entering into the stomach. Intestinal phase, food is in the intestine. Yeah. Now I am going to link this with this diagram. So now coming to cephalic phase, cephalic phase is neural neural. So it is just neural involvement like virus. So what happens when I think there is secretion? So this is when I think of food, there is secretion in the stomach. This is cephalic phase, which is vagus. That is, vagus is cephalic. And from because of this vagus, gastrin will be secreted from. And because of this vagus, under the influence of neural. So all these are neural. Because only if the vagus is being stimulated in the cephalic phase, 
that vagus will cause gastrin to be secreted from G cells and that gastrin stimulates the parietal cells to secrete HCl. So, as I told, I am connecting the parietal cell with the phases of gastric secretion. Already I told about 1, 2, 3. 1 for B, CCKB, which is gastrin, H2, which is histamine, M3, which is acetylcholine. 1, 2, 3, very clear. So, during cephalic phase, it is vagus, and vagus will cause G cells to secrete gastrin, ECL, that is enterochromophilin like cells to secrete histamine. Again, which will act on H2 and in fact, vagus directly acts on parietal cells. So, vagus via gastrin acts on G cells. So, vagus via gastrin acts on CCKB receptors. Vagus via enterochromophilin like cells acts on H2 and vagus even directly stimulates the parietal cells. So, all these increases HCL secretion which happens in cephalic phase. Now come to gastric phase. So, so in cephalic phase, food does not enter the stomach, but acid secretion has started in the stomach, that is cephalic phase. In gastric phase, food has entered the stomach, especially partially digested proteins. So once this food enters, what happens? It stretches the stomach. The stretch is a very important signal for it. So what happens? In gastric phase, once the food enters into the stomach, there is a stretch as I put the aroma, even outer I can put. So there is a stretch. And what this stretch does? It again stimulates the vagus. So this will be a front or DM, dorsal motor nuclei of vagus now. And from here the effort comes. So this will be a front. So the, because of the stretch, the stretch stimulates the vagus now. So afferent is also going to vagus, afferent is also coming via vagus. This is called vago vagal reflex. It is a long reflex. And apart from this, there is a local yeah, stretch. Instead of going up to the medulla and coming back, yeah, this is local. So even there is local enteric reflux that also causes increase in acid secretion. This is gastric phase. So gastric phase is both neural as well as hormonal. So what happens? The stretch also stimulates gastric. So this in cephalic phase, it is vagus which causes gastric secretion. So it is neural. Whereas here, the stretch itself, direct now, this in fact this one, the partially digested protein causes G cells to secret gastrin and the rest you know, the gastrin will act on CCKB receptors and the GQ pathway and HCL is being secreted. Apart from that, this gastrin will also act on enterochromophilin like cells, which secretes histamine and the histamine they get secrets HCL. And now I will write here D cells which is going to secret somatostatin and what D cells will do? It inhibits HCL secretion. So, so far I discussed cephalic phase, gastric phase. I will come from top to bottom. So, top is vagus here. What vagus does? It controls gastric, it controls CCL cells and it also controls parietal cell. Understand? What gastric does? It does not control vagus because gastric is below. So what gastrin does? Gastrin controls ECL cells and gastrin also directly knows parietal cells. What ECL cell does? It has no control over gastrin, no control over virus. So ECL cell just secretes histamine and which increases HCL secretion. So from top to bottom. So cephalic phase is purely from virus which involves gastrin, ECL cells, all those things. Gastric phase is gastrin and gastrin involves direct involvement of parietal cells and the gastrin indirectly through ECL cells secretes system which also increases HCL secretion. And also D cells from the antrum secret somatostatin which inhibits HCL secretion. Now understand what is vagus going to do on D cells. You can pause the video. Vagus will stimulate the D cells or inhibit the D cells because D cells which is secreting somatostatin inhibits HCL secretion which we know. Yeah, so vagus inhibits. 
gas chain inhibits ECL cells, inhibits histamine, inhibits minus, 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 minus. So everything will inhibit the somatostatin so that acid secretion is not inhibited because all this vagus, gas chain, histamine, all the areas, tumulus of acid secretion which you told in the start of the class. Pactyl cell will do to somatostatin or D cells. Yeah, like negative feedback. What pactyl cell does is a negative feedback. So, when the pactyl cells are secreting more HCL, pactyl cells also you can see a stimulus, see a green color. So, pactyl cells stimulate somatostatin, but what somatostatin does? It inhibits pactyl cell. So, this is a negative feedback. I hope you are clear. Now, coming to intestinal phase. Intestinal phase means food is entering from the stomach into the intestine, initial part duodenum. So, when the food enters into the first part of duodenum or initial phase of intestinal phase, what happens? That may be increased in excellent secretion, like gastric stimulating excellent secretion, we can understand. But as the food enters or during the later phase, we can divide intestinal phase, early phase, late phase. In early phase, there may be increase in excellent secretion. During late phase, what happens? The fat products or the digested fat products, they will separate colonic histokinin. And you can see here, the colonic histokinin, the black color, inhibits Parental cell or the polycystokinin inhibits sexual secretion apart from that secretin is also there. So what secretin does? It also inhibits HCL secretion. Very very important. And simply you have to you can remember intestine mainly which is functioning of digestion and absorption of nutrients. Intestine records and alkaline medium, especially the secretin, course secretin. So secretin will be able to function only in an alkaline medium or IPH. So HCL secretion has to be decreased in the intestinal phase. And one more way by which HCL is being secreted in the intestinal phase is enterogastric reflux. Note it down. Entro means intestine, gastric means stomach. So there is a reflux from the intestine into the stomach. Enterogastric reflux, which causes decreased HCL secretion. So in today's class, I started with how the parietal cell secretes HCL by 1, 2, 3. One is CCKB for gas chain, two is H2 receptor for histamine, three is M3 receptor for astrocolon. And all these increase actual secretion, very clear. Then I discussed about various phases. Cephalic phase is neural, gastric phase is both neural and hormonal, and how it is being regulated from top to bottom, like Vegas controls everything. So all those things we discussed in today's topic of regulation of gastric secretion. So in next class, we will come up with another video thank you for watching so please subscribe my channel and uh, press the bell button for notifications for upcoming videos so i'm regularly updating the physiology videos thank you for watching